Welcome everybody to an episode of Learning with Bell Vista Studios. I am so excited about today's guest, Ana Maria Dorgo. Thank you for being here. Um, I want to recognize you to begin with um, because you, every single post or something that I interact with that you have touched always adds value to my life. Um, it is always very thought provoking and it's always something that not everyone is talking about or like just, you know, saying or doing. So I really, really thank you for inspiring me personally. And the other thing that I wanted to recommend or <laughs> recognize you for and also recommend you for is that like the community that you've created with the L&D Shakers um, and the other like talented people that are supporting to do what it takes to make that how amazing it is and the link for people will be in the description of this video but um how I've been involved is just like a passive member really as a LinkedIn group but what you have done is built a really safe community this is how I receive it anyway mm -hmm. it's very safe it's very supportive um it's very focused on learning i.e there's no sales in there um everyone's very curious and I get curious with pretty much every post that comes out very transparent as well so the sharing that happens in there people are literally just giving away so much valuable intellectual property um which is really really rare and just very good quality stuff and it's very productive as well so just a big well done and set the scene for this episode today <laughs> Um, so yeah, basically everyone that's listening, we've got an awesome human here that is very good at building effective communities for learning. And Ana Maria today, I was like, this could go anywhere. But I, one thing that I struggle with with the community of practice sort of stuff and for people actually listening, I guess the framing around communities is let's think of it from a community of practice, workshop, training, sprint, that sort of frame of mind. What I struggle with is whenever I try to like learn more about it or recommend it to a client, it's very focused on the what and the why, but I find it very difficult to figure out the how. So, because you're the expert <laughs> in my eyes, I think you've done a really good job of it. I want to do like a quick fire. I've come up with, now it says, it seems like a lot, but 23, how might I <laughs> questions for you? And I what, I would, <laughs> what I would love is for you to give a specific action. It just has to be one action that someone could do to solve that how might I question. Are you ready to play? Yes, let's do this. Do you need any I'm excited. clarification or? <laughs> no, I think, I think, I hope not. I think not. So that's clear. I'm going to like go full idea modus on and how might I, those are my favorite questions. Also when people want to like just grab a coffee and chat, I always like, Hey, what are you working on? What's the challenge? Like I love ideation. Yeah. Um, thanks so much for inviting me for this chat. And I can't wait to see what you have in store. Um, excited. <laughs> yeah, cool. Let's go well, for let's it. All right. So how might I build an effective community in a hybrid space? Hmm. So interesting because uh, none of the communities that I've been building or am mm. part of are hybrid. Uh, L&D Shakers started as a local community in Amsterdam and moved into being an online community. Mm. The first thing that comes to mind is identifying your biggest supporters like your most active and passionate community members in different areas and then empowering them and giving them the freedom to take this project and turn it into reality so I am a very big fan of um, just letting people allowing people uh, to own pieces of the community and I am sure that them being locals, so if, if we were to go with like local hubs, for example, then um, they would know best what works in the region and culturally and who the people are and where are l &D professionals meeting and where are they gathering and so on. Mm -hmm. And the hybrid element to it, this is an interesting one uh, because 
it would be very great to be able to take whatever goodness happens in those local events and make it available for the rest of the people that are joining in online. Yeah. I'm not sure if I would like mix it, mix it, or if just like have parts of the community online and parts like local and having them be able to interact with both. But that's where my mind goes first. I like it. I am satisfied with your response and I have cool. an action to take. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. How might I enable a community of practice to sustain itself? Super short answer. And that's also kind of like my MO go to mm. um, tool. It's uh, always, always co-design and co-creation. I build with people, I involve them, we workshop, we get together um, and very much listen to their ideas. Mm -hmm. And also this has to come with an own readiness to be open to what's being shared. Uh, sometimes, you know, kill your darlings, like <laughs> you, you go into building something and everyone has an idea of it, but then as a builder, you have to be able to truly listen and be like, oh, actually, that's much better than what I had in mind. Mm. So co-creation has worked perfectly for the LED shakers. And then fully sustained, you need a basis of processes and a basis of communication and how do we take decision that is clear for everyone while leaving the space for emergence. Like, let's mm. not plan everything because then where's the fun in that? But let's have like a solid foundation on how we work together and then let things emerge. Uh, but having the space to always come back to um, on ways of working, decision-making and so on. Yeah, very cool. How might we encourage helpers, not leeches in a community? Ooh, getting spicier. Uh, <laughs> I think, and this, um, I'm thinking about it a lot because I think that the, what, what we've built with the Shakers, it's this very special place which has a very interesting culture. And I think it's a lot of what helped us was, I think the discourse from the beginning on, like specifically talking about what the space is about, how you can make the most of it, who would mm. thrive in the space, modeling behaviors and so on, like very action oriented, very giving, very supportive. and. Um, it's we we talk a lot about the the benefits of actually being actively involved in that space and then you create this culture with time and um i mean right now with we're, we're 1800 more plus people not everyone is like super engaged and giving and sharing mm. um but there's this um this vibe or this feeling that this is a place to learn and to take but also at the same time to give so there's a lot of talk about how do I give back and a lot of people approaching me like this is like kind of fun and magical I don't know what I want to do but I know that I want to do something here what can I do mm. and then we we brainstorm like this um but I I if I were to go back I don't know what's like the secret formula it was the even the words we pick what we talk the behavior we model I think mm -hmm. that kind of created that culture. And now it's very easy because you land in that space and that's what you see. So you kind of like adjust to what is already there. So I think that that's very crucial for communities at the beginning. How do we create the culture? Very much like in a company at the end. I like it. How, do you, how might we accommodate introverts and extroverts in our communities? Yes, big big topic to be honest with everything with communities with events with learning experiences etc and um this this kind of mix of um activities or events or options opportunities to contribute and get involved and some of them are very um putting yourself out there like all of our community events are member-led like they're hosted by our members so that mm -hmm. would be like a very high I'm putting myself out there, I'm hosting an event and I have to prepare and facilitate it and so on. 
then there that's like a very engagement or like we have project managers they take a project in their hand they work with a project team for the community like the unconventional the unconference or the coaching for lnd for example so those are those are people that are vocal and they they they're comfortable in that position and then there are this kind of mini interactions and those are uh, when we talk about events, we have this networking event, which is you don't have to prepare anything. It's not about experts. It's not about who, as, who you are as a professional. It's more who you are as a person. You know, what do you like to do and where do you live and what do you read and, you know, what do you like to eat and all those fun things. So that's like a very easy, mm. easy way and it's paired. So for introvert, it's great to meet people like one on one as uh, we have the donut. So it's pairing people um, for random coffee chats. And then the simple fact that you can comment to posts, I think that's a very easy gateway for um, introverts to, to, to be part of it. And then we also have a lot of people that are not even commenting, but they're, they are checking that space and they're taking value out of it. And then that's perfect. If that's what they need, that's amazing. Like um, I always say, imagine 1,000 people being all actively involved. Like we would go insane, right? Like, <laughs> so there's a, there's a good balance in between um, introverts and extroverts. And um, we're still thinking about things, especially um, also in regards to introverts, but also what's really on my mind right now is this kind of, as we grow, how do we enable feel this deeper connections like what can we do what are things we do to go deeper and not be like at the superficial level and uh, mm. i'm on it like my brain's on it yeah watch this space <laughs> watch this space there we go yeah cool how might we create a collective identity for community members uh so i think that who, whoever is starting when you're st starting to design the space there's there's always it will always start with one person with, or with a group of people mm -hmm. and that's already the the red thread that is that they have in common that's already the seed right so mm -hmm. and for communities of practice that is very easy because you have usually this already shared identity of a practice something that we're doing together a professional identity that we have and then it's how do we go from our professional identity as LNB professionals to LND shakers. So what is this shakers? And, and then you're adding, basically you're building on top. Mm -hmm. And in terms of how might we, again, what we did, and I'm going back to co-creation and co-design at the very, very beginning when we were like around hundred people, we workshops. So we had a series of three workshops and that's where the first, like we were already starting to run events and meet and so on, but never have we talked about, hey, who are we? What's our mission? What's our purpose? What, mm. You know, what's happening in the space? It kind of like emerged. And then once we were a hundred, we said, you know what? Let's a test liberating structures and run workshops only using liberating structures as an experiment, as a learning thing. But while we do that, let's also get together and see what is the space we're creating together? Like no one really knows, you know? So everyone had their ideas. And then, and that's how, how we build it. Like we define that together with the group. Mm. And then it's a, it's the key afterwards is to always come back to it. Like, I think that now after two years, we're finding ourselves like, oh, are these values still like, do they still apply? Do we have to add to them? Do we have to refresh them? Are, are we different? Have we, because a lot of things, and we are very different as a community. Okay. And it's also the um, communication afterwards, which is how do you keep communicating? In which shape and form you keep communicating those that shared identity and who we are and mm. what we bring to each other and so on cool how might we embrace liberating structures by experiencing them mm -hmm. i'm a massive fan and they are I, I, i'm amazed that they are a free to grab resource on the internet and anyone can go there and they can just run them and if you open the website and you look at them you're like yeah okay so they're just activities but actually you have to if you immerse yourself like if you find that group of people and say let's just test it mm -hmm. um you'll you'll get it like you get the mechanics and you get what they enable and i was lucky enough to attend a two-day immersive liberating structure experience and 
it was amazing. So it changed my life. And I'm like, every time I get to sprinkle some liberating structures, I'm, I'm there. I'm the first one. Yeah. To, cool. And, and, uh, and they have great community as well. So mm. they're, they're constantly, they're constantly experimenting and there's new liberating structures coming up. Like they're testing new things and they're putting them out there. So it's, a, yeah. it's an emerging uh, tool. Very cool. How might we create a community that enables knowledge to be constructed, not acquired? So here's how it works. Here's how we how it works for the LND shakers. Knowledge to be constructed, that's for me the like it's the holy grail of community, right? It's kind of the the toppest maximum level of engagement when you have people coming together to design, to work on a project, to, to do something new that I haven't done before. Um, and I guess that for us, there were two things that were helpful. And again, it's about that, who is starting to experiment with something so that everyone else can see what that is and they can like kind of have behaviors and examples to hang on to and dream of possibilities because if you don't know that's possible then you won't actually come up with an idea to do that and um it started for the shakers at least last year um when we come up with the idea for the coaching for L D. that was the very first a project so it had a starting date and end date there was a team like we marketed like it was a it was a project more bigger than an event yeah um and it was coaches giving back to L&D professionals, like free coaching sessions. And so that was already like, oh, so we can also do that. Like we can also have projects where people get together and do things. And then uh, that continued with this. Um, very often it happens. It starts from knowledge sharing, right? So someone posts something in the community and says, oh, hey, I am actually working on... I don't know. I, I don't know how to work this hybrid thing. Like my, the company wants to like go back and I have to now run sessions with people like in a room and then online. So how do I do that? Right. And then other people are like, I've run one or I have no idea. Or, and then at a certain moment, someone says, Hey, it's seven of us. Shouldn't we maybe like get it, like jump on a call and do this thing. And I like kind of brainstorm. So then uh, we called those kind of emerging things learning clusters. So we gave mm -hmm. them a name. We're talking about them. We're putting them in our um, value proposition, right? So <laughs> the things you can do with the shakers. And so it's very much self-sustained. And we've come together. We've built, for example, in, uh, in three hours, like we had three sessions of an hour. We filled a mini booklet on how to launch, run, and measure a leadership program. And there were like, I think 15 shakers that contributed to that. There's an ongoing one where started by Alexandra. She's like, I have no idea what to do with this strategy. It overwhelms. I've no, like, I have to build my enemy strategy. Where do I start? And then were the people like, hey, let's, let's do this together. And now we're writing a playbook for whoever works in L&D to, and we don't, we don't know. I mean, we don't know that we, we're all, we know what the strategy is. I mean, whether you, you know, want to or not, you kind of like have to have a strategy if you're working L&D, right? But what are ways, like, what is like the best way? What are best practices and how we can compile those things? So I guess it's, if I go back to how to start with an experiment and then talk about it, give names to the things and explicitly say in this community, you can create something as long as you own it. So again, no one's going to control what you're doing, but also no one is going to like pull your uh, sleeve and say, okay, are you doing this? Do you want to do this? It's like, the space is here. It's full of amazing and smart people. If you want to use this platform to build something, do it, like use it. Um, and then we talk about these examples. And I noticed that, um, it's, it's very magnetic, like it's very magnetic to, and sometimes like we use tiny gifts or like screenshots. It's like, hey, there's this group of people and we're working on this and who wants in? And there's, a, there's kind of like this excitement that builds up. And then again, I also have to mention, it's not easy. Like it maybe it sounds like, oh, I put a call to action, then five people say yes. And then we get together and mm, people are getting excited. They, 
won't stay excited for long. Others will join. Like it's a, it's a, it's a massive process. We don't have yet kind of like a map of, mm-hmm. oh, watch out. This is what might happen. This is what you can do because we're learning by doing. But as many with every learning cluster that comes up, we learn. We learn new things like how might that co-created knowledge dynamic look like. Um, so there we are. It's a work in process. But those are like the the most fun things you can you can actually do um yeah yeah there's a lot of debate and there's a lot of you know like how do you do it and how do i how would i do it and on it's it's, because they don't work together at often they don't even know each other and they have to build something right so there's this kind of also like group dynamics and (laughs) it's complex but it's so fun and rewarding yeah it's freaking magic. Okay. Yeah, I say uh, I, I say the same. I'm like, wow, well, like talk it, about it forever. Yeah, I yeah. I do want to put a clause on? Like, I want to go deeper on so many things that you're saying, but I'm also conscious the framing of this one is this podcast is to just get some practical hows out. But I would encourage people to go experience the L and D shakers to reach out and learn more. Follow what Anna Maria is up to and the other crew. Like, just phenomenal. Um, yeah, so I'm keeping it at your tip level. How might we create a community that enables learning through modeling? Uh, so I think this, this is a bit, uh, I think I've mentioned this a couple of times, somehow by the definition of, and by the dynamics of what community is or should be, or in its purest or best shape and form is actually a group of people that learns and there's this dynamic and they share and they co-create and then build stuff together. I think that by the definition of that, it's, it is, and because it's social, it is by modeling. So you will, it's, it's very easy to see what others are doing and how they behave and then start to model that behavior. Mm. um that's how you create the spirit of the community so uh, how, like why is shakers different than other lnd community because everywhere people share things and everywhere but like in the shakers everyone can own a piece of the cake everyone can run with things it's a lot of independence there's a lot of you know there's creativity there's things we don't know let's do projects that we haven't done before and if it pays so what we learn because we're lnd people and everything that happens whether it's good or bad it's a learning opportunity so that makes mm. things easier um and talking about it I guess just like trying to work out loud and build in public or build with others and in in communities very like we encourage that a lot hey you had an event post a picture tell your insights encourage others to to, you know to share what they what they've seen and what they heard and um a, a, a very important part I guess it's also like documentation and that's something that we have to be very like get better at Mm-hmm. Um, because I think that having a good documentation, like documents library, it's very important for capturing all the insights and the knowledge for people to have as a reference and be like, oh, I could, I could do this, or that was already done. And I could, um, so I'd say it's a mix of doing just like mm-hmm. doing stuff and then talking about it and making sense together with others. That's at least my experience. Yeah, I like it. How might we create a community that enables learners to tackle real issues with real consequences? Ah, yes. Um, So I think I'm, I guess that part being part of a community the, of like-minded people, so it's really a community of practice. One of the main values that you get out of it is that a, you're surrounded by people that speak your language, so everyone knows. Like when you're celebrating a success, they feel it. When you're struggling with something, they can feel it because they, like, I'm sure they've been there, done that at a certain moment in life. And so I think um, it's a. Uh, everything you're bringing to the table, because you know that you're surrounded by people that 
are experiencing the same things that you do, everything you're bringing to the table, whether that's a resource, whether that's an example of a project, whether that's a question, it's rooted in, in real problems. It's rooted mm -hmm. in real work. It's rooted in what you're actually having to work on this week or this month, right? So that already by the fact that it's a practice and that's what put, brings us together, that's already very much real and important. Um, and then also this opportunity, like if you're really daring and if, you, if, you, if you're the type of learner by doing and that drives outside the comfort zone, Shakers is a great platform to, to, to bring projects to life. And those projects are rarely theoretical projects, that those projects are always, um, like coaching for l &D came from, there are so many people that were laid off and they struggle to find a job. It just takes time. Uh, and we have so many coaches. Would they want to offer free coaching session for a period of time to people who need an open ear and they need someone to recenter them and they need that space, you know? That's a real, that's a real issue, you know? That's a real problem that the community kind of like got together to solve. Um, unconventional, that was like an unconference. And the question was like, so you hear on conference and you hear bar camp and I've never attended one nor run one. So I was like, I want to learn how to, to run one. A, you're solving so many things because everyone that shows is talking about something that they're working on or they're passionate about. So A, the amount of knowledge you gain in a short period of time, it's just like tons. Second, we show, we as l and professionals, by having this collective experience that we're creating, you're actually learning how you might do that in your company. Like, would that be something that you could do in your company? Like if you're a European company, global company, how like a, a, a non-conference is a great tool to encourage knowledge sharing, for example. So the fact that we've done it with the shakers and people saw it, they were like, oh, maybe I could do a non-conference um, in my company. So again, like it's everything's kind of like rooted in this, in the work we're doing every day you know in our yeah. companies yeah absolutely and that on conference like phenomenal congratulations i have gone on since to clients and said like we have a client who's doing a graduate program they're a global company and i've and they're like we just these are the challenges and i'm like you need to do an on conference oh my god i went to this one it was amazing and that that's like happening for them so that's freaking it is special yeah. Yeah. But that that's exactly the thing. Like some sometimes we 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 do things collectively, but so rarely I hear this kind of success story. And sometimes people in the community do stop to come to me or to any other member and come back to them and say, Oh, hey, actually that idea, or you know that article, or you know that event that I attended, or you know that or whatever it is, you know that I brought that to my manager. And then it turned into this amazing project. And now obviously like I, I'm doing a great job and I got promoted or mm -hmm. I, you know, I positioned myself as an expert and, and I want to thank you and the community for that. And I'm like, that, those like, see, that's real right there. You take things and it's not about, you know, a, 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 it's about the thing you have to do every single day. It's the challenges that you have to overcome every single day. And you take that and you, you're putting it out there and and it brings results and then you're becoming a better enemy professional and then you know you have bigger impact and you're better at your job so how awesome is that right like I find that that's just yeah it's uh it's magical <laughs> yes it is. as you keep on saying it is magical yeah 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 also I want to say that you are magical like you have no idea what's coming at you and you had no idea of the format of this podcast and you every yeah, no. single freaking response is just beyond valuable like so thank you you're doing really well and it's freaking super so thank you <laughs> thanks so much <laughs> how might we uh create a community that enables learners to reflect on an experience afterwards Ooh. Mm, we're not, not not really good at this to be honest um, that's okay it's a how might we <laughs> yes 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 it's a I love the question and 
I admit we're struggling, we're struggling with this. So again, we're, we're struggling with kind of like this documentation and um, how do we capture all the goodness that are happening in our events? Like we're running events every week and if not every week, every second week there's something happening. So there's usually three, four events per month and we rarely capture that. So if you attend the session, you take your notes and you you know you're learning and you're sharing and so on, but we're, we haven't yet find this mechanism to like take notes collectively kind of. Um, but now that I think, I, I think that would be great. And if I, my, like my mind goes back to, when I said the words taking notes collectively, I went back to the bar camp experience, the on-conference mm. experience where documentation is a very big part of the, 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 the experience, right? And the, the, the steps that you have to like properly organize it on conference. And <laughs> so now I wonder how awesome would it be if then each event would come with the notion page, for example, mm. or a mural board or like any, any, any tool, like a Google Drive sheet, whatever it is, right? Um, and people could collectively take notes and all of the links that are shared in Slack, in uh, Slack, in in the chat of that event, are being pulled into that, and then we keep that somewhere for for people to go back to it. And right now, the only thing, like the reflection afterwards, is just if if there is a follow up post that usually comes with these are three takeaways, then that's like a nudge to remember that two days ago you were there, and then maybe you took some notes, and that you know, and then there is potentially an invitation to a reflection. Mm. Um, and my mind also goes to, could we create a ritual, a reflection ritual mm. for the community, for either things we've experienced already, things we've done to just like refresh them and bring them back and you know sit with them in a different light and so on, but also in general reflecting um so that's what I take from your question mm. I think and thank you so much because it's kind of uh yeah well I think it's nice yeah. even to see you reflecting in the moment you know like that's quite <laughs> cool um but you've given people tips there's definitely practical actions from that <laughs> cool how might we create a community that is self-directed Mm -hmm. or self-directed mm. learning I guess actually more specifically yes so um again from from the experience with the shakers it's this um and maybe it's a like I'm, I'm going to use the word invitation but often mm. is um allowing Al although you're thinking hey it's a community like and I often exactly use this word like you don't need someone to allow you to do something but people and and maybe I feel that I don't need this allowance because I kind of like started this so then I'm go I'm like it's my personal learning playground but other members that have joined they at, they at times feel this need to hey I have an idea but is this possible? Like, can I do this? And they're kind of asking for permission. And then it's, for me, it's a combination of invitation. Like, here's what's possible. Like in every single new community member that joins on LinkedIn by either myself or Lena Nasiako, we have like, we take turns uh, every two, two weeks. We're welcoming new member with a personal message. This is our notion. Uh, does the surveys tell us who you are? What are you working on? What are your challenges? Um, this is the Slack. And then we always end that message with, this is your space to use as you see fit. You can attend events, host events, run a project, get involved in something that there's there, building something from scratch, something that is not even there and no one has thought about it. Mm. This you can use this community for that. So that's already this kind of nudge or this giving the invitation for them to know that there are some things that some people are doing. But if you want to like put something out there and generate something, like come up with something, then then that's possible. Yeah. Uh, second of all, let, let go of control. I am personally very attached to the community. It occupies a lot of my free time. It occupies a lot of my 
idle time. It's like I'm, every, my brain just goes there. I love it. I'm passionate about it. I love the people. I love what we're creating. I'm amazed by it. Sometimes I'm like, people ask me, so how do you do it? And I'm like, I don't know. It's just like, it's happening. It's just, it's beautiful, right? Uh, and it's, I had to learn to let go and to trust people that I haven't worked with before and I didn't knew and I what helps me a lot is reminding myself Ana Maria this is the way you're learning everyone is allowed to learn like that's the whole point if there's if everything is controlled if everything's perfect then there's no learning right like then there's no so it's this that thing letting go and that happened very fast for the shakers because after those initial workshops that I, I told you about actually the community came and said hey we the core team that is like kind of a strategic and things of where this can go in time but then we have so many events and we'd like to have more but obviously we're all full-time employees or freelancer or have our own businesses so you know the shakers it's a passion so why don't we just split it so every event has their catalyst and then and so this is, it came this kind of like, let's conquer this big challenge together. And so that helped me a lot of, okay, it's not just me. It's not on my shoulders. It's on, it's on our shoulders. And um, it happens a lot that people raise their hands with ideas. And the moment we promote them, the message is this, oh, hey, Kim the other day has read this and this. And then so she thought that this would be a good idea. So now Kim suddenly is the project manager for this thing. Mm. Anyone else would like to get involved? So it's when we talk about new things and we put them out there, it's it's always a, someone saw something, had an idea, does an experiment. We don't know how this will go. There we go. Let's have fun with it. Mm. So I guess that this, this combination of like mini kind of tiny teams, it's... Um, it's, it's, it's giving people this invitation and this permission to be self-directed. Um, but I guess what it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily do is if you're not self-directed, can this community help you become self-directed? That I don't know. I think that if you are already that type of person that learns by doing and it's comfortable with doing something they haven't done before, I have no idea what's going to come out of it. Mm. Comfortable with a potential failure, right? Um, they would try, but I'm not sure if this is having an impact on people that need more certainty, that people that need a bit more planning or that are not by, you know, by nature like that, this kind of self-driven. Mm. So this gets me thinking, I never thought about this. So this is a new thought in my head. And I, mm. I thank you for that question. Oh, that's okay. I, my mm. observation of that is there's a time and a place for what you have mm. and those other communities do exist so I don't mm. see it as a gap in the opportunity to learn in our industry I yeah. think that it is covered somewhere it's just whether the yeah. people are finding the right community for them mm. there we go um, yeah okay. exactly in the essence of reflection and self-directed learning, I'm going to ask the people that are listening or watching this to pause the recording and take a moment to reflect on what is resonating and what you're going to do differently, something you're going to put into action. Maybe just pick one thing for now, experiment with it, and then go back and, I don't know, create something as a result of it, construct something, fail at it think about how you want to do something different but basically take take a moment now to pause and just put something into practice or commit to putting something to practice by maybe putting in your calendar so that you can embed your learning and back to the <laughs> live recording um okay we have 12 minutes left and i think we're only halfway through the questions right so Ooh. What I want to do is I'm going to ask them, but we're going to go really quickly in terms of okay. I'll give you to do one practical tip but a sentence okay. only. Okay, one sentence yes. response. How might we effectively communicate uh, ground rules or construct ground rules? Embed them, construct together collectively again, um, communicate, uh, embed them in onboarding mm -hmm. and capture them somewhere that people cool. can find afterwards. Yeah. How might we choose a space for our community? 
space, it's important because it has to enable sharing and collaboration and communication. It's the last thing that should be on your mind when you're building community. Ooh. How might we um, hmm. choose a communication method? Hmm. Communication method. Um, I don't know. What is a communication method? Um, I, examples would be... By email or... Yeah, email. You've got your Slack group. Uh, Ah, uh, yeah. Um, so start somewhere. Don't like at the beginning, don't think about it too much. Just start somewhere in, in a place, in a tool that allows you to talk to each other. Mm. So if it's a newsletter, it's very hard to build community if you have a newsletter, right? So it, you need a forum, you need a type of communication, like a platform that allows that. And then go with the flow. Our Slack came six months later after our LinkedIn because there was a different need. And LinkedIn wasn't feeling that it. So yeah. we brought in Slack. Cool. How might we get feedback on if the community is working? Ask the community through uh, surveys, uh, polls, if you want to make it super easy. And also you'll notice and the engagement and the things that are popping and the movement that's happening and the learning that's happening. Yeah. How might we embrace, lib oh no, I did that one. How might we attract the right members? Uh, be always very transparent and very um, genuine into who you are, what's happening, what's the benefit and what is this space not. And um, people will carry that message and that culture out. Mm. Giving that communities is more than 50% is word of mouth. People talking about it to other people that might find it valuable. So that you already like kind of like attract the right people mm. by that. How might we optimize the community? One of the most, the biggest question, optimize. It's, um, there, there's a lot, I think you can go with structure. Like how do you structure this space? Or how do we optimize mm -hmm. communication? How do we make sure that people know what goes where? And that's an optimization. So they don't have to think too much. Oh, I wanna ask this, where should this go? Right, so that, that's in place, the space. Um, and then it's good to have, like watch the analytics and make sense of the data and do something with it, like action on it. Yeah. How might we engage new members when you have a strong existing community? Yes, personal welcome. Um, always, uh, when they introduce themselves, make sure you welcome them uh, based on what you learn about them. Either invite them to an event, space, book club, whatever that is, or tag another person that is somehow linked to them by location, working on the same project, whatever it is. Or uh, always, we, we run networking sessions every month. We always tag the new people in that post and we also share that. So it's like, hey, you're here, this is where we talk, this is our Notion page, but then here's where you can actually meet some people and establish some connection in your first month. This is why you have a fabulous community. All of these answers. <laughs> oh, how might we mm. determine the core activities or events of our community? We have workshop on this. We started with mm. the typical webinar, an expert comes, they chat, there's a Q&A. That's, that's that. That's how we started with events when we moved online. Uh, we workshopped on it and we asked people, what would you like to see in the space to add value to your work and you as a professional? And then we had a short list and then we had an event catalyst and these people had to make them happen. And then um, actually you, you look at the attendance and you look at how well received they are and what's the feedback we get after each event. There's a feedback form. Mm. And um, leave behind the ones that are, for whatever reason, it's, there's, they don't ignite at, at the moment. Learning, conversation, just let them fade. I like that. That's nice permission. <laughs> okay, you got four left. So just to give you, a, you yes. can breathe after that. Okay. Um, how might we capture ideas, outputs, information that are shared in our community? We, um, I think that's a big challenge for communities in general, especially for us, because we don't have, we're not really good at automation. Like no one really looked at 
you know, automating things, it would be really great. One thing that I know um, from my work at Butter is this automation in Slack works wonders. So you could actually work with the systems of tags and then there's like, this is an idea, this is the thought, whatever. And then Zapier automatically pulls that into Notion. We don't have that with the shakers, but if I would have to think about that, like serendipious mm. knowledge that's being shared, uh, usually the most valuable one. There's a question here and someone shares five resources, right? So how do we capture that? Um, I would go for that. I would go with an integration. Yeah, cool. How might we encourage endorsement of key stakeholders to support a community of practice in an organization? Uh, I would go with an experiment, start small. Um, find the people that would that are really passionate about, like find the self-directed learners, those people that are going beyond their job to learn and to be out there and to build their personal brand as experts rally them co-create with them like start like with them I think community doesn't really work that well I guess if someone starts and like there's this kind of one person that continues to push and is like mm, you're talking into a void bring people together so there's no echo when there's a lot of people there's no echo when you're alone there's echo so um, <laughs> there, there you have it and I would experiment with a department with a project even with, um, we have a leadership program. So can we like create a small community of practice of these leaders? And then you go and see what's happening there. And you have this kind of like container and you're making it work. And then you have the data, you have the feedback, you have the impact, you have ideas that are coming out of that. And you can make your case for company-wide community, for example. Good one. How might we provide immediate value that makes a person return to a community? Uh, I think it's always there for communities of practice, the easiest way to provide value is a to share a resource or direct them to something that we might believe in the whole community space they would find valuable. So they're like, oh, this is kind of like I'm working on that or um, there's a person that I might know or might be might be valuable. So I always go with resources or connections. Um, and oh, like inviting them to an event. If, they're, if they are joining an event in the first two months and they see people and they connect with people and they talk in breakout rooms, there's this momentum building. And, uh, and so that's how you kind of, uh, you know, show them what the spirit of the community is. Mm. I love that. That's a phenomenal response just for so mm. many reasons for me. Okay, mm. last one. How might we keep the community focused on its intent as it grows? Mm, we're, we're, there, we're there right now uh, with the Alani Shakers after two years. Mm. Uh, I would say there's always a mix between very good communication, often communication. We're still improving on that. Like there's so much happening behind the scenes and where you're investing your little time and your big passion whenever you can and how you can, we often forget to communicate. We often forget to say, this is happening. We're working on this or, you know, and we usually just like, we communicate the lounge or we communicate the final thing or, um, so constant communication of all the steps in the process. Um, and then community feedback. Like I like to sometimes ask people, hey, mm, you know, what would you like to see? What don't you like? Uh, I have this idea, should we do this? Yes or no? Um, we also have a survey that we invite everyone that joins us to um, fill in. Mm. Some do, others don't, it's not mandatory. Like no one is chasing them to like, oh, you haven't filled your survey, but uh, there's a lot of responses at the moment. Um, so there's a lot of data mm. and we've pulled out the data out when it comes to challenges and why have you joined the space and what are you hoping to find? And then we kind of like clustered and we are overlapping that with our value proposition at the moment and the gaps, potential gaps and how we might feel that. So that's proving a very valuable source of information for us. Um, and we're there right now with like, what do we have? Is this good? Is this qualitative? And then is this enough? Yeah. Okay. 
Holly. Wow, 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 wow. This you was so much fun. Exceptional. Oh my God. I'm so inspired. And I'm just like so excited for people to really get into like you just, well, I don't know. There was so much value. There's like three to five to seven actionable tips per answer going on there. And I just want people to know like I had only invited you for the hour so that's why I was conscious of time and didn't spend more time because I know people will be like Kim why didn't you go deeper here why didn't you ask more questions but I know that you've just <laughs> delivered so much value and it will change how people think about communities and think about nurturing people mm. um even just learners in their training session oh my god that was phenomenal I cannot express in words how like grateful I am for what you've oh. shared um yeah I can't express that but I just feel it like it feels magical you are magical thank you so much <laughs> uh this really it's like bomb to my heart I um thank you thank thanks a lot and for anyone who is like if you're listening to this and you're like your mind's buzzing and you want to start something and there you're missing that last drop of confidence or that last drop of whatever find me on LinkedIn chase me down and I'll be happy to share to share and like encourage you and cheer for you and go for it because uh there's so many wonderful things beyond fear like every single every time i do something new i'm doing it in fear and then wow. one once once you break that you know once you go beyond that it's just kind of like ah, a whole new world and i was like i'm so glad i sat with that fear and i made friends with mm. it and now i'm here so reach out and maybe i can help I don't know. I try to at least. You and thanks so much, Kim. This was super fun. I was like so nervous of like, oh, I don't know what we're talking about. I mean, I know it's community, but like what? And yeah. zero preparation. I had no idea. I, I absolutely love this fire. Uh, like how many questions you had? 20. 23. Yeah, 23. This is a great format, everyone, for community <laughs> building. Expert hot seat. Expert <laughs> AMA. So there you go. <laughs> That is like phenomenal. Okay, so disclosure, these questions came from one blog you wrote. Um, eh. And it is your like communities of practice, a case study. And so I read that and then that's what stimulated me to have these as my questions. Um, so people that wanna read it, it is really, really good. Go, it's The link is in the description so you can explore it more and you talk through like, what were your challenges? How you overcame them? How they then played out the results? So you can have yourself to thank for the questions that came your way um, <laughs> cool. but I just think it's an exceptional reflection of the your skill set your capability your passion your talent um in terms of the person you are the worker and practitioner that you are and the kind of communities that you build and that pe what people can expect from the L&D shakers because for you to show up like that not know what's coming your way and give that much value in each response like thank you thank you for the invitation this was a lot of fun <laughs> and you, uh i was just gonna say so you work at butter do you want to tell people what that's about and how it might benefit yeah. their lives quickly before we end so if you know butter you already know you're, you were let in on the magic, but if you do not do not know it, Butter is this, it's a virtual platform that allows anyone that is running any type of collaborative session, whether those are trainings or workshops, uh, sprints, wh whatever. So you don't have to be a facilitator. You can be a product manager, whatever. You're running virtual sessions that are collaborative and you want them to be engaging and fun. Uh, Butter allows you to plan that session into detail. It reduces tremendously text complexity because of all the integrations and the innate features. Like you don't need to send them to another poll link. You don't need to send them to like ev everything's there. You have timers, music and everything you need. Um, and it's really fun and you can try it out for free at butter.us or us. Um, <laughs> and we're building a community for facilitators, workshoppers, consultants. So um, it's uh, it's kind of fresh, we're still kind of new. So then we're like, we're in this exploration and experimenting phase, but it's, it's picking up. It's like the puzzle, like the Tetris is like starting to form. So 
even even if you're in community building, it's it's a great place to you know hang out with me and bounce off ideas. So mm. you're welcome to join That's that a bonus. Uh, space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you everyone for listening or watching to this episode with Anna Maria Gorgo. Thank you so much. Um, I want you to tell us how you contribute to a community or what you're going to do to impact the community as a result of this episode. And please go give some love to Anna Maria on mm -hmm. LinkedIn and let her know that the value this added. Would you like to have the final say message to the listeners and the lovers of your work? Yeah, I just, the, if you're not part of a community, go and find your tribe now, because it's, from my experience, it changed me as a professional, like a hundred percent, most definitely. And it also changed a lot who I am as a person. And so go there, find it and play an active part, get your hands dirty that's where this magic that we keep on talking about that's where that's when that happens so go for it and if you cannot find it build build your tribe design that space yeah that's 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 all i have thank you so much kim this was really fun uh i'm, I'm trying not to, to talk because i said you would have the final word so. okay so there we go i was like i like to talk a lot in case you haven't noticed so um Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you around the internet. What's up, awesome human? Thank you, thank you, thank you on behalf of myself and the Bell Vista Studios team for continuously choosing to learn with us. We really appreciate it. If the tips and the insights and the context resonate with you and you want to take your skills to the next level or you want to make your life way easier, you will love our Creator Hub. The Creator Hub is a place for people like you and us. Basically, it's the stuff that we use internally at Bell Vista Studios and then we just share it publicly with you. The Creator Hub is created by instructional designers for instructional designers. And what you'll love there at the moment is we've got a quiz could I be a better instructional designer that has so much tips in the feedback if you're interested in human-centered design or just taking your skills to the next level in terms of the solutions you're creating and the problems you want to solve. But in there as well, aren't we cute? That's us. Um, but we've got the coaching courses, freebies, give us gratitude, and also we've got some templates. And basically they're always around the lens of learning experience design, instructional design, and e-learning. So a human-centered design focus is very much what we're about at Bell Vista Studio. So putting your learners at the heart of a solution and creating something for their needs. So there's the human-centered design stuff, and then we've also got the business stuff. So this is the stuff they don't teach you about when you want to become a freelancer or a consultant in the instructional design world. So go check it out. The link is in the description. You can check out everything that is available for you. Thank you for choosing to learn with us. Continuously invest in your skills. You will be rewarded as an instructional designer. Share this stuff, share it with other people because when we are better instructional designers, we create better solutions that create better humans that create a better world. So we have a very important role and I'm excited to be on this journey with you. Have an awesome day.